Astrophotography is one of those um, hobbies that can give you great pleasure and great reward, um, but equally it can also give you a, a lot of frustration and tears and teeth gnashing. And a couple of nights ago, I was out trying to photograph the Rosette Nebula, and it was more of a frustration and teeth gnashing night rather than uh, only putting up the easy videos where you get lovely results and no real problems, I thought I'd show you um, perhaps the other side of the coin where you have to fight a little bit for your results. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with this video. So in order to kind of minimise the likely problems I'm going to have when I'm uh, doing my imaging, I use a, a very simple setup. I've got a small refractor, which is generally considered to be the most forgiving type of device for astrophotography. You can get your polar alignment not perfect and still get a reasonable performance. I use short exposures. I use a DSLR camera and the one of the advantages of the DSLR camera is that it doesn't need a computer to run it so you're not worried about making bits of kit talk to other bits of kit um, albeit it is quite limiting in terms of the the results that you can get out of it uh, I don't use guiding again that needs more cameras more interface with computers so I don't bother with any of that um, I just use a very simple standalone setup and the idea being that this minimizes the risks of things going wrong. Um, but sometimes things go wrong in an area that you've kind of not expected them to or not come across before. And uh, that's indeed what happened uh, the other night. So the Rosette Nebula is uh, one of my favorite winter targets. I um, imaged it last year, took about an hour's worth of, of exposures. And um, I was quite pleased with the result, but the image is very heavily dominated by stars. So I fancied doing a, a, another shot at it this year, um, at this time subduing the stars a little bit by uh, using a, my newfound knowledge of Starnet++. Uh, the trouble is, is it's now early March and getting really towards the end of the uh, season as far as the Rosette Nebula is concerned. In my back garden, my ideal sort of imaging area, if you like, is from probably the northeast around to the southeast. And once you get beyond the south, I've got a street lamp at the back of my garden, which completely washes the sky out and causes problems. The Rosette Nebula at the moment is more towards the south. And so it's pretty well the end of the season for me. My last real chance is probably over the next week to actually take an image. Um, but anyway, I came home from work. I could see the clouds were clearing and I was very excited to see what I could do to get the Rosette Nebula uh, for this year. So it was about now that my problems started. What I was expecting to happen was I'd done a two star alignment on my mount here um, where I picked two stars myself, locate them on the telescope and then from there the um, mount can work out where it is and slew to uh, whatever object you want to look at. And I always do 
two star alignment where I get to pick the stars. I usually make the second star quite close to the object that I'm looking for so that the scope doesn't have to make a huge movement to get to my intended target. This is good because it means if your polar alignment's out slightly or your mount's not quite level or whatever, the chances are you're still going to um, get your target. And in this instance, my second alignment star was the star Betelgeuse or Betelgeuse if you like to pronounce it that way in Orion. And basically looking at the sky, the Rosette Nebula is not very far away from that to the left, maybe 10 degrees or so. And so I'd expected after I'd got Betelgeuse right smack in the uh, middle of my view, that when I said I wanted the scope to slew across to uh, the Rosette Nebula, that my scope would just swing to the left slightly by 10 degrees and I'd find that I was bang on target. And that's not what happened. Instead of that, my mount slewed not 10 degrees to the left, but like 350 degree rotation the other way. And by the time it had actually done its 350 degree rotation, I took a test shot of the bit of sky that I could see and I was basically missing the target. I, I couldn't see the star cluster that forms the uh, center of the Rosette Nebula. I wasn't particularly expecting to see the Rosette Nebula, but I know what the little cluster looks like, that if you've got that, you know you're, you're on target. And the reason for the fact that the, the mount hadn't found it was because it had done such a big rotation the wrong way, as far as I was concerned. So, um, yeah, I now had a little bit of a problem. Normally what I do in this instance is I can um, take the picture off my camera onto my phone by a kind of Bluetoothy connection thing or Wi-Fi connection thing and put that photograph into um, a program called, I think it's Astronomy Net. And what that does is it looks at the stars in your picture and tells you exactly where you are. And so this is what I was planning on doing in, in this instance. However, when I tried to link my camera to my phone, it said that I needed like a new Bluetooth code or needed to put in the Bluetooth code that I'd used when I first did this ages ago, which of course I've got no idea what it is. My camera's never done this before, so um, suddenly I couldn't take the image off my camera and into my phone. So what I ended up doing was taking the card out of the camera and putting it into my computer. And as luck would have it, I boot my computer up and it wants to do a Windows update. So I'm losing more and more and more time as I'm going along. And problem is that my target is slewing more and more towards that street lamp that I showed you and I'm not gonna get anything out of it. So this basically brought an end to my first night's activities. I'd um, discovered that I was off target. In the end, once I got my computer up and running, I was just a, a degree or so out of, from where I wanted to be, but there was no chance of me going back to um, do the job again. So I had to abandon it for the evening. So I was obviously quite frustrated at the, uh, at the goings on. Um, so what I ended up doing once I'd packed everything up and, and brought it all inside was I went on to um, one of my Facebook groups, uh, which is Budget Astrophotography, and asked the question about why my mount might take the long way round to get to a target. And I had a, a few answers come in from Edward, Ryan and Mark, who basically pointed me in the right direction. Essentially, the sky above you can be regarded as a, as a big sphere. And there is a kind of imaginary line 
that runs from due south, sort of over there, and it goes up and over your head to the highest point, the zenith, and then it drops back down to north over there. And this line is called the meridian. And it turns out that if your scope is sitting just to one side of the meridian and uh, where I was, I was pointing at the star Betelgeuse, which was just to one side. It was just past south, basically. And you want to move across, in my case, to the left to cross the meridian and go a little bit to the other side of it that what the scope will do is rather than cross the meridian, it goes all the way round the back of it. And this is in fact what happened with what I was doing. Um, I had a, a target on one side of the meridian. I was sitting on just the other side of the meridian and although both were close together, my scope wasn't going to cross the meridian and just make the little hop. It was going to go the long way round. And so what I would need to do when I got out again would be to not pick a second alignment star on the wrong side of the meridian. For me, this has never cropped up before. And the reason really is south for me is a bit of a no-no. It's too close to the uh, street lamp that I show you. And I was only really imaging in that part of the sky because I'm getting desperate and it's my kind of last chance to, to get this target. So, um, yeah, at least I found out what the problem was. And what I wanted to do was to come back on another night and pick different alignment stars where I wasn't going to cross the, the, the meridian. And in fact, that's what I did when I got out a couple of nights later. So yeah, I was lucky enough a couple of nights later to um, have another clear night. And so I dived out and redid the entire exercise. But this time round, the star that I used as my second alignment star was uh, Procyon in the constellation Canis Minor. And this is, I think, the eighth brightest star in the night sky as we see it. So it's a very prominent uh, star. But importantly, it's on the same side of the meridian as is the nebula that I was targeting. So this time round, I didn't have the problem of the mount slewing in the direction opposite to how I wanted it to. And I found the target pretty well straight off. So that was all the good news. The bad news was, was that, of course, now I'm a couple of days later, it's doesn't get dark until that little bit later. Everything's moved that little bit nearer the street lamp that I showed you earlier. So I only really had a maximum of one hour to get my exposures. So yeah, the whole target really was um, making me fight this time round. But nonetheless, I took my exposures, I took the hours worth more or less processed them, tried to get rid of the light pollution gradient as best I could. Uh, in doing this, I probably had to artificially darken the sky, which gets rid of uh, detail in the nebula, as well as helping get rid of the uh, light pollution gradient. But I guess after all this struggle and whatever, I was just pleased to get something out of it. So um, yeah, this video really shows you that it's not all plain sailing. But with a bit of perseverance, you can, you know, hopefully extract something out of it. Um, I think the image actually is better than the one that I took last year. But that's mostly because I'm, I'm better at getting rid of um, stars out of images and, and a little bit better at processing them. But anyway, I'll, um, I'll put them up now. I uh, hope you like the image and I shall see you next time. Take care. <laughs>